You know, Pat Benatar was on to something when she said love is a battlefield. There might not be a couple that knows that better than Jana Kramer and Mike Cawson. Their relationship scandals have made headlines, but earlier they told me they're ready to use the bad for the good. Check it out. She was a rising star in Hollywood and Nashville. He was a professional football player. When they met, their romance moved fast. From engagement to marriage to expecting their first child all within a year. But with the highs came lows. A cheating scandal split the couple apart. But Jana returned to Mike's side when he later admitted to having a sex addiction. Now, the couple says they're stronger than ever with two kids and is passing on their learned life lessons to other couples in a new book, The Good Fight. Welcome, Jana and Mike, to Daily Blast Live. Hey. Hey, Erica. Thanks for having us. <laughs> well, thanks for being here. And we're going to jump right in because every couple has their own dirty laundry, but not every couple reveals theirs in a book. So what do you say to the people who believe relationship issues maybe should stay in the bedroom? I mean, I definitely think, you know, there's some truth to that. Um, you know, there's certain things that we don't tell our friends, but I also think being open and vulnerable with your friends is sometimes can really help a relationship. Um, I know a lot of times couples that we've known and friends that we've had, like once they've expressed kind of their issues, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't hold as much weight for them and they might have a better relationship. So I think sometimes sharing is actually a really healthy thing for the relationship. You know, Mike, you've done more than just control the narrative. Um, you've been very open about your addiction issues. And most of the time when someone is open about something like addiction that they're battling, um, people applaud them for their, their transparency because they're helping other people who might be going through it. But when we talk about sex addiction, many people are still coming around to the understanding that it is in fact a real addiction. So how do you deal with people who don't believe it's a real condition you know that's a great question um, and it's unfortunate because I do feel that way at times where you know if I was in AA or you know in 12-step program for drugs or anything else you know get a little bit more pat on the back and empathy and support and the fact that my addiction isn't socially accepted yet and society is about 10 to 15 years behind you know the ball on that it's there's a lot more shame involved in it and you know I have my moments where I might feel uncomfortable in a moment because maybe someone's judging me a little bit more because they don't believe in sex addiction or think it's a married man's excuse and all of this. But you know what, it's my truth. It's the life that I live and that's all that matters to me. And unfortunately over time, I've been able to get more comfortable with that. Um, and I have an amazing wife that supports me. So that's really all that matters to me. Okay, so let's dive more into the book. Now you share the advice to quote, claim your baggage. And sometimes that baggage is infidelity. So when a relationship is built on trust and that trust is broken, is it possible to fully trust that person again? It's hard when you're living with an addict. Do I trust Michael today? Yeah, I do. I, he's showing up today as a husband. He's showing up as a father today. The problem with our relationship is like, every time you start to trust, something would happen. And then it is just like, it just you can never like hold on to anything. So now if we get a couple good years in us where we feel like, okay, like he's been straight and we've been good, then I can be like, okay, I can, I can trust this a little bit more. But I think it just takes time and it takes a lot of goodwill and a lot of um, love in the bank. Well, I appreciate the love in the bank thing because really you're talking about um, your baggage and bringing it up in a relationship. And do you think that it's important that you have certain amounts of deposits of love in the bank before you start bringing up your baggage? Or do you think that it's something that should be brought up maybe before, you know, all of those deposits are made? You know, even when I met him, I was like, look, I've been married two times before. I have daddy issues. I've got this, I've got that. And I'm like, you kind of take it or you leave it. Like I want a kid, I want to get married. Right. Like, Maybe I was a little, but it worked in the beginning. Yeah, she got me. <laughs> but I, I, mean, I don't know. I think you got. It depends on 
what age you're at and level of maturity. Right. Well, I mean, Jana, to be honest, I am a lot like you in terms of I just put it all out there like, listen, this is it. I was, I'm remarried. I told my now husband that, listen, I'm a divorcee. I have these issues, blah, blah, blah. Basically, this is what it is. I was very transparent in the beginning. And, you know, I do believe that that helped at least manage expectations of who we were and what we were both bringing to the table. Well, I thank you and Mike because um, I really do appreciate your honesty and transparency. I know that you are helping other people get through and make their relationships better. Their best-selling book, The Good Fight, is on bookstore shelves now. And if you need more Mike and Jana in your life, you can also check out their award-winning podcast, Wind Down. We will be right back. Thanks, girl.